Wishing all our viewers a very happy Holi. We are live from New Delhi. You're watching DD India News R, India's voice to the world. I'm Siddharth Bharadwaj. Coming up in the next hour. In Moscow attack, Russia court charges four men with act of terrorism. Four or 137 people killed and over 150 injured in Friday attack. India's external affairs minister S.J. Shankar speaks to his Russian counterpart, reaffirms India's resolution to continue fighting terrorism in all its manifestations together with Russia. India slams Pakistan at the 148th IPU assembly in Geneva, says Jammu and Kashmir, Ladakh will remain an integral and inalienable part of India. No amount of rhetoric and propaganda from anyone can override this fact. Pakistan would be well advised to stop its terror factories that continue to launch countless cross-border terrorist attacks in Jammu and Kashmir. UN Security Council to vote on new Gaza ceasefire draft. Israel bans UNRWA's food aid convoy to North Gaza. The Festival of Colours Holi is being celebrated worldwide with diverse cultural integrations, symbolising the victory of good over evil and encouraging harmony. Latest update from the Moscow attack, Russia court on Sunday late evening has charged four men with acts of terrorism in connection with March 22 deadly concert hall attack. Video showed all of them being marched blindfolded by masked police into the court. As per the court statement, two of them have admitted their guilt. All four are to be held in pre-trial detention until at least 22nd of May. All were arrested hours after four gunmen on Friday night stormed the Crocus City Hall on the outskirts of Moscow and began firing on some of the estimated 6,000 people who were attending a rock concert. The attackers also set fires which engulfed the venue and caused the roof to collapse. Russian authorities said 137 people were killed and more than 150 injured. Russia on Sunday lowered its national flag on top of the Kremlin to half-mast as the country mourns the victims that were killed in a terrorist attack at a concert hall in northwestern Moscow. The Red Square remains closed as Russian authorities shut down all access points to this iconic landmark in Moscow following the attack. India's external affairs minister S.J. Shankar held talks with his Russian counterpart Sergei Lavrov and conveyed his condolences on the loss of lives in Moscow terror attack. In a social media post, Dr. S.J. Shankar said, and I quote, spoke to Russian foreign minister Sergei Lavrov, conveyed our deepest condolences on the loss of lives in the horrific terrorist attack in Moscow. Interacting with the Indian community in Singapore, Dr. Jayashankar reaffirmed India's resolution to continue fighting terrorism in all its manifestations together with Russia. Russia is a country with which we have always had a positive relationship. Uh, both India and Russia have taken that extra care to look after each other's interests. The UN Security Council is set to vote on a resolution on Monday demanding a humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza during the Muslim holy month of Ramadan. The resolution put forward by the 10 elected council members is backed by Russia and China, who vetoed a US-sponsored resolution on Friday that supported an immediate and sustained ceasefire in the Israel-Hamas conflict in Gaza. The 22nd nation, uh, 22 in fact nation Arab group at the UN issued a statement Friday night appealing to all 15 council members to act with unity and urgency and vote for the resolution to halt the bloodshed, preserve human lives and avert further human suffering and destruction. Since the conflict broke out on October 7, the Security Council has adopted two resolutions on the worsening humanitarian situation in Gaza, but none has called for a ceasefire. 
Well, the head of the UN Palestinian Refugee Agency, UNRWA, said on Sunday, Israel had informed the UN that it will no longer approve UNRWA food convoys to the north of Gaza. UNRWA chief Philippine Lazzarini in a social media post said, this is outrageous and makes it intentional to obstruct life-saving assistance during a man-made famine. He added, these restrictions must be lifted. He warned that the move will speed up the coming of famine in the north of Gaza Strip and said that many more will die of hunger, dehydration. The United Nations Chief Antonio Guterres said on Sunday in Cairo that delivering the necessary aid to Gaza requires Israel removing the remaining obstacles and choke points to relief. During a joint press conference with Egyptian Foreign Minister Sameh Shokri, Guterres repeated his call for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza. Guterres also warned of the impact of the conflict in Gaza was having around the globe. Palestinians in Gaza desperately need what has been promised, a flood of aid. Not trickles, not drops. Some progress has been made, but much more needs to be done. Making that happen takes very practical steps. It requires Israel removing the remaining obstacles and shock points to relief. It requires more crossings and access points. All alternative routes are, of course, welcome. But the only efficient and effective way to move heavy goods is by road. It requires an exponential increase in commercial goods. And I repeat, it requires an immediate humanitarian ceasefire. Guterres is visiting Egypt and Jordan as part of an annual Ramadan solidarity tour to Muslim countries and travelled on Saturday to Egypt's border with Gaza, where he called the backlog of aid destined for the Palestinian territory a moral outrage. Guterres said the United Nations was working hard to sustain funding for its agency for Palestinian refugees, UNRWA, which he called the backbone for humanitarian aid inside Gaza. We are working hard uh, in order, on one hand, to guarantee that there is donor support to UNRWA, that is the backbone of uh, uh, humanitarian aid inside Gaza. Uh, and at the same time, uh, we were very clear we have an inspection that uh, is working in order to detect uh, any areas of infiltration that might exist we want UNRWA to be uh, fully based on UN values agency and uh, we are working in a determined way for that and uh, uh, on the other hand uh, we have a review that is being conducted in order to improve the capacity of uh, UNRWA to uh, fully respect uh, those values. As unrest in Haiti continues, clashes broke out between the national police and armed groups on Friday, leaving a gang leader dead. Haitian police has launched a retaliatory operation as the Caribbean country has been gripped by violence since rival gangs unleashed a wave of attacks this month. The conflict has killed thousands and displaced hundreds of thousands. Peace justice officials were seen on Friday recovering a dozen charred bodies who were allegedly members of the gang and burying them in a mass grave at a cemetery in Port-au-Prince. As Russia-Ukraine conflict continues, thousands of consumers in Kharkiv are left without electricity supply after a Friday missile attack. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky expressed his concern and said that strict electricity schedules are being followed to combat the situation. The situation is very difficult. More than 200,000 customers, apartments and houses in the city of Kharkiv and one of the districts of the region are without stable power supply and are subject to rather strict electricity schedules. The local authorities, all service and the government clearly understand the time frame and technical requirements for normalizing the situation. A hearing is being held in New York City today to determine whether one of Donald Trump's criminal cases will go to trial. The trial was expected to be getting underway this week, but a judge decided to delay proceedings. Separately, the former president also faces a deadline to pay millions of dollars after a separate Manhattan judge found him liable for fraud. William Denslow reports from New York. 
Well, Monday is expected to be an incredibly busy day when it comes to Donald Trump's legal battles. If we first turn our attention to Donald Trump's hush money case, this could be the first of Donald Trump's four criminal cases he faces to go to trial. He faces 34 counts relating to allegations that he falsified business documents. This case is tied to allegations that Donald Trump paid hush money to a porn star ahead of the 2016 presidential elections. Charges Donald Trump has vehemently denied. Now, this case was expected to go to trial on March 25th, on Monday. However, a judge at the last minute delayed that by at least 30 days. This was because a tranche of documents was released by federal prosecutors, around 119,000 cases pages to be precise, most of which pertaining to an investigation into Donald Trump's one-time fixer, Michael Cohen, who is now expected to be the prosecution's key witness against the former president. Now, Donald Trump says uh, that this case should be dismissed. His team says that Alvin Bragg, the Manhattan DA, the district attorney, failed uh, when it comes to their obligations on discovery. They want to see this case tossed completely or at least substantially delayed. As far as the DA is concerned, well, he says that he's been asking for these federal documents uh, from federal investigators for months. He also says that on last review, only around 270 of those documents were relevant so far. All eyes will be on Judge Juan Machan to see when this trial will indeed, uh, well indeed this case will go to trial if indeed we do get to that point. Another key development expected later on Monday is a deadline for Donald Trump to pay what he is owed in a civil case when a judge ruled that Donald Trump was liable for fraud when it comes to allegations that he inflated the value of his assets to obtain favorable terms from lenders. Donald Trump faced a $355 million fine. Taking into account interest, though, that spikes to over $450 million. Donald Trump's team says that over 20 bond firms have rejected their advances. And essentially, the question is how Donald Trump will pay for this, for this fine. On social media, Donald Trump says that the case has been a witch hunt and a scam. He says that he should, he should be the one paid damages and not the other way around. So real question is, what could this mean to some of Donald Trump's most famous assets, things like his properties here in New York? Trump Tower, for example, such a prominent uh, part of the New York City skyline. A slight complication there, though, is the fact that Donald Trump doesn't own many of these properties that have his name on them outright. So that could mean seizing any of Trump's properties here in New York could be very complicated indeed. William Denslow in New York reporting for DD India. And still to come on DD India News Hour. Simon Harris is now poised to become the island's next prime minister. Counting of votes underway in Senegal's presidential polls, Basiru Diome Fe leading in early tallies. Stepping up its spa combat, North Korean leader Kim Jong un visited a tank unit for inspection. Mesmerizing abundance of nature. Vast accumulation of natural resources. Rich legacy of contributing to India's economic foundations. Preserving a vast and diverse tribal culture.
with diverse offerings, Charkhan is a haven for various tourism activities. Shaping India's future generations with quality education. A breeding ground for future sports persons. Come experience the sheer richness of nature and culture, diversity of tribal heritage, traditions and craft, and progressive development and growth. You're watching DD India News R. I'm Siddharth Bharadwaj. India has slammed Pakistan once again over its absurd remarks on Jammu and Kashmir. Speaking at the 148th session of the Inter-Parliamentary Union Assembly in Geneva, Deputy Chairman of Rajya Sabha Harivansh, representing India, emphasized India's status as the largest democracy in the world, a model that many countries aspire to emulate. He critiqued Pakistan's track record on democracy. Addressing Pakistan's claims on Jammu and Kashmir directly, Arivansh reaffirmed that the Union territories of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh are integral parts of India. He highlighted the futility of rhetoric and propaganda in changing this undeniable fact. To reject the preposterous comments made by Pakistan against my country. Lectures by a country which has an absolute track record of democracy is laughable, to say the least. It would have been better if Pakistan did not undermine the importance of a platform like IPU by such absurd allegations and false narratives. As regards the union territories of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh, they have been and will always remain an integral and inalienable part of India. No amount of rhetoric and propaganda from anyone can override this fact. Instead, Pakistan would be well advised to stop its terror factories that continue to launch countless cross-border terrorist attacks in Jammu and Kashmir while farcically claiming to champion the cause of human rights. IPU members are well aware that Pakistan has an established history of harboring, aiding and actively supporting terrorists. Simon Harris confirmed as a new leader of Ireland's Fine Gael political party on Sunday and is now poised to become the country's next Prime Minister. Fine Gael party confirmed Harris's leadership following the resignation of party leader and PM Leo Varadkar on Wednesday. Harris was the only candidate to put his name forward in nominations. 37-year-old Harris, best known for helping steer at the country's initial response to COVID-19, will be voted in as Ireland's youngest ever Prime Minister when Parliament next sits on April 9, thanks to support from coalition partners. As counting of votes is underway in Senegal's presidential polls, initial tallies have shown competitor Basiru Diome Fe leading on Sunday. And this prompting opposition supporters to go out and celebrate early. To choose Senegal's fifth president, millions of people participated in a calm day of voting on Sunday. The election came after three years of extraordinary political unrest that led to violent anti-government demonstrations and increased support for the opposition. Brazilian police arrested three people on Sunday, including a federal lawmaker, in connection with the 2018 murder of Rio de Janeiro City Council member Mariale Franco and her driver. Joao Cinquino Barazo, a businessman and current member of Brazil's lower house, his brother, Rio Court of Auditors advisor Domingos Brazao and former head of Rio Civil Police Rivaldo Barbosa, had been taken into custody. Two former police officers were arrested a year after the crime. Brazilian Justice Minister at a press conference in Brasilia said that crime was clearly political in nature and that investigative work on this case has concluded. It had concluded, in fact, with the arrests.
North Korean leader Kim Jong-un visited a tank unit for inspection on Sunday. Kim Jong-un also called for stepping up its combat readiness, including greater ideological and mental power. During the visit, Kim was briefed by the division commander on its attack and defense operation plan, reviewed documents and provided the direction of operational combat missions and training for the troops. As Sri Lanka celebrates the auspicious occasion of uh, Medin Poya, the High Commission of India in Colombo unveiled a Buddhist exhibition in, at Sri Lanka. Uh, Sambodhi Maha Vihara Temple. Medin Poya is celebrated to mark the day when Buddha visited Father King Sudodhana for the first time as Sama Sambud or fully enlightened one. This exhibition serves as a vibrant tapestry weaving together India's profound Buddhist legacy through a collection of evocative photographs depicting pivotal moments from the life of Buddha and showcasing revered pilgrimage sites across India. The Selva Vinayagar Kovil Temple in central Sri Lankan city of Kandy is observing the annual Chariot Festival today. On the occasion, the Assistant High Commissioner of India at Kandy organized a Dansala. Ice creams were distributed to around 3,000 devotees who participated in the Chariot Festival. The Selva Vinayagar Kovil is a revered Hindu temple dedicated to Lord Ganesh. As the Israel Hamas armed conflict hits day 170, the world is looking forward to some breakthrough in the truce talks in Doha. The Qatar hosted indirect talks between Israel and Hamas seem to be at a difficult stage amid significant differences over certain issues. Pressure within Israel continues to mount on Benjamin Netanyahu to find a way out. While long-term ally, the U.S. warns of global isolation if the attacks continue in Rafah region. Mihim Mekhuri has the latest as the conflict is all set to hit the half-year mark. As the Israel-Hamas conflict rages on, intense negotiations are going on in Doha to reach a new Gaza truce. Israeli officials led by Musachi, foreign talks with Hamas, mediated by CIA director and Qatari and Egyptian officials. However, a deadlock continues due to significant gaps in the prisoner to hostage ratio. Israel is willing to suspend its offensive for six weeks for 40 hostages, but Hamas is demanding more concessions. Meanwhile, civilian pressure is mounting on Israel's Netanyahu government to strike a deal with Hamas and secure the release of hostages held in Gaza. I'm here tonight, like every Saturday night, to speak in the loudest voice I can for my brother who's been a hostage 169 days in Gaza, speaking to the government to move forward on the deal. Everyone is in Qatar. It's time to close the deal. In the battlefield, Israel's military operation near Gaza's Al Shifa hospital has resulted in the killings of over 170 terrorists and the detention of 480 others. Israeli forces, believing the hospital complex is linked to Hamas through tunnels, have been conducting a thorough search since storming the area earlier this week. The operation here in Shifa is significant, a daring, tricky, and most impressive operation so far. It struck hundreds of terrorists, apprehended hundreds of terrorists, and brought in significant operational and intelligence assets. We are continuing with this operation. The leadership of the commanders is excellent. And we will finish this operation only when the last terrorist is in our hands, alive or dead. <laughs> Sunday also saw Israeli forces airstriking Rafah in its continued operations against Hamas. On the other hand, after visiting Rafah, where the UN chief called blocked aid for Gaza a moral outrage, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres emphasized the need for increased commercial deliveries by road to meet Gaza's humanitarian needs during his visit to Egypt on Sunday. He also highlighted the conflict's global impact. The only efficient and effective way to move heavy goods is by road. It requires an exponential increase in commercial goods 
And I repeat, it requires an immediate humanitarian ceasefire. On the Lebanese front, the Israeli army conducted an air raid on Baalbek, Hezbollah's stronghold in eastern Lebanon. As per the Israeli army, the strike targeted a manufacturing site containing weapons belonging to Hezbollah. The latest chapter to a decades-old conflict began after Hamas launched an unprecedented assault on Israel on the 7th of October last year with hundreds of gunmen infiltrating communities near the Gaza Strip. Israeli military says Hamas has taken 200 soldiers and civilians, including women and children, as hostages to Gaza. Mihir Makri, reporting for DD India. Now, the Nigerian army on Sunday rescued students and staff who were abducted by gunmen from a school in the country's north earlier this month. Military spokesperson Major General Edward Buba said 137 hostages, 76 females and 61 males were rescued in the early hours of Sunday in neighboring state of Zamfara. The kidnapping of 2,287 students on March 7 in Kuriga, a dusty town in the northwestern states of Kaduna, was the first mass abduction in Africa's most populous nation since 2021. Last week, the gunmen demanded 690,000 US dollars for the release of missing children and staff. The government had said it would not pay any ransom. Let's take a look at other stories making news around the world. France's government increased its security alert posture to the highest level Sunday after the deadly attack on Russian concert hall and the Islamic State's claim of responsibility. French Prime Minister Gabriel Attal announced the decision in a post on X, saying authorities were taking into account the Islamic State's claim of responsibility for the Moscow attack and the threats weighing in our country. France has repeatedly been hit by deadly Islamic State attacks, including the Bataclan Theatre massacre in 2015 in which extremists opened fire on concert goers and held hostages for hours. Professionals working with Paris's migrant and homeless populations protested what they called social cleansing ahead of the 2024 Olympics on Sunday in the French capital. Organizers say members of their organizations on the ground have witnessed authorities working to push poor people out of Paris at an ever-increasing pace to make room for the Games. The Games will run from July 26 to August 11 and the Paralympic Games from August 28 to September 8. Four people got killed after a race car drifted off-road and hit spectators at a rally in northern Hungary on Sunday. At least eight were injured. The reason for the crash is not yet known, police said in a statement. With Easter around the corner, people across the world are participating in various events to celebrate the Christian holiday. An Easter-themed hat parade in Hong Kong saw people donning unique hats and marching to band music. And still to come on DD India News Hour. Poll fever grips India. Parties releasing their lists of candidates. We bring you report on countries' geographical divide and elections. We show you how the festival of colors Holi is being celebrated across the world. World. Stories of challenges, struggles and accomplishments. A world battling conflict, hunger and poverty. Embracing growth, development, science and technology. A voice of progress, a voice of unity. Watch Voice of the Global South with me, Akshay Dongre, only on DD India. You're watching DD India News R. I am Siddharth Bharadwaj and let's have a look at the headlines once again. In Moscow attack, Russia court charges four men with act of terrorism. Over 137 people killed and over 150 injured in Friday attack. India's external affairs minister S. Jay Shankar speaks to his Russian counterpart, reaffirms India's resolution to continue fighting terrorism in all its manifestations together with Russia. India slams Pakistan at 148th IPU assembly in Geneva. 
says Jammu and Kashmir, Ladakh will remain an integral and inalienable part of India. No amount of rhetoric and propaganda from anyone can override this fact. UN Security Council to vote on new Gaza ceasefire draft. Israel bans UNRWA's food aid convoy to North Gaza. The Festival of Colors Holi is being celebrated worldwide with diverse cultural integrations, symbolizing the victory of good over evil and encouraging harmony. All right, let's get you the latest on what's happening in India in the run-up to the world's largest democratic election in India. The dual interaction between geography and political decisions and the geographical structure of the election system are an essential part of elections in India. The vast topography and cultural diversity play a major role in planning and conduct of elections. More in this report. India, the largest democracy in the world. Apart from sheer number of voters, there are many other factors that make the planning and conduct of elections a huge challenge. Geographical diversity, climatic conditions, socio-cultural diversity are addressed in the meticulous planning for elections by the Election Commission of India. A high grade of professionalism, continued innovation, technological integrations and strategic interventions come into play to ensure free, fair and credible elections in a country as vast and diverse as India. Due consideration is given to the topography and the ease of travel of voters. Along with this, the security management, religious festivals, harvesting season and climatic conditions also play a key role in finalizing the dates. Also, the commission keeps in mind the schedule of school exams as teachers are also deployed for election duties. The Election Commission of India has developed a number of tools such as vulnerability mapping deals with preventing voters from being influenced wrongfully in relation to exercise their right to vote. ECI manages the polling station, infrastructure and accessibility of voters as well. A set of rules under the assured minimum facilities take care of proper accessibility to the polling station. Braille facility in the EVMs, proper parking facilities, clean waiting sheds, etc. Force deployment plan along with outreach activities and voter awareness programs are also held to increase voter turnout to ensure smooth elections. The main aim of this mega exercise is to cater to the constitutional mandate and the premise, no voter to be left behind. Bureau Report, TD India. Holi, the colour of festival, from the young to the young at heart, people of all ages embrace this festival by immersing themselves in a kaleidoscope of colours and dancing to the rhythm of their hearts. Let's take a look at India's most colourful tradition which marks the arrival of spring and is associated with happiness. Vibrant colours. Holy. Suckle gets us more. It's again the time of the year marked by riot of colours, vibrant splash of different hues and shades across the Indian subcontinent, the holy festivities in India. Holi, one of the popular festivals of Hindus of India, also famous as Festival of Colours, symbolises love, arrival of spring with abundant colours, invocation of good harvest season while bidding adieu to winter season.
The legend signifies Holi as a celebration of eternal and divine love between Hindu deities Radha and Krishna. Additionally, the day signifies the triumph of good over evil as well. Indian cities like Mathura, Vrindavan, Barsana and Nandagaon hold great significance in Hindu mythology as these places are associated with the life and times of Lord Krishna. The flavor of Holi here is world famous as it attracts teeming tourists the world over. The Holi originated and is predominantly celebrated in the Indian subcontinent but over the years it has spread to other regions of Asia and beyond through the Indian diaspora. Holi festivities are also common in some Caribbean communities of Indian origin such as Trinidad, Tobago, Mauritius, Fiji, South Africa, Guyana among others. Cutting across the cultural spectrum and age groups in diverse democracy like India, holy celebrations are also about fun banter, smearing special color powder, traditionally called gulal or abir on each other and feasting on specially prepared holy delicacies. Holi festival also has a religious tinge symbolically signified by the legend of Holika. The night before Holi, bonfires are lit in a ceremony known as Holika Dahen or burning of Holika. In tandem with vibrance of India's democracy, Holi ushers in with it the joy, the vibrance, the pomp and fervour, the grandeur, marking new beginnings with the onset of spring season. With Aarti Rana, Sakal Bhatt for DD India. President of India, Draupadi Murmu, has extended her holy greetings to the nation. In a message, the President has said, on the auspicious occasion of Holi, I extend my greetings and best wishes to all Indians living in India and abroad. Holi is a vibrant and joyous festival which infuses hope and enthusiasm into our lives. Various colors of Holi symbolize the diversity of a country. This festival promotes the feeling of love, unity and brotherhood among the people. This festival also inspires us to strengthen our cultural heritage. May this festival of colours bring happiness in everyone's life and motivate all of us to work towards nation building with new zeal. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi has extended greeting to the people of country on the occasion of Holi. In a post written in Hindi on X, PM Modi said, Wishing all my family members a plethora of heartfelt holy greetings. May this festival adorned with colours of affection and goodwill bring new energy and enthusiasm into your lives. Well, as uh, holy fervour grips India, I've been joined by my correspondent uh, Ajay Mishra. He's in Vrindavan. Uh, Ajay, first of all, happy holy to you. And I must say this that only the lucky ones get to see Holi in Vrindavan. Tell us, how's the mood there? How's the atmosphere? And how are people celebrating Holi? I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's all over the Vrindavan that uh, uh, you feel, you celebrate Holi. You celebrate Holi in, uh, in other parts of India, but you celebrate uh, Hora in Vrindavan. Uh, it means in regional, lang in the local lang language, that uh, the, the holy is great, uh, uh, you know, this is the land of love where in Vrindavan you can see that colors are being Indeed. splashed from all over the directions and this is a journey from materialistic world to the spirituality that the people want to enjoy here and uh, I, have, uh, I have come across uh, people from many continents be it Japan, uh, US and Fiji and I have spoken to them, uh, they were mesmerized to see the vibrant colors of Vrindavan hmm. and uh, uh, it's, it's a beautiful journey in Vrindavan, Indeed. which takes you from this materialistic world to the spiritual world, because uh, it is the it is the it is the festival of uh, uh, you know linkage between the Paramatma and Jivatma, as they say. So it's a different in Vrindavan. You have to come here to actually feel it. Actually, uh, if you uh, if you if you use the your dust of Vrindavan and and put it on the forehead, it is believed that uh, you become you know uh, you attain the salvation. So. Uh, 
along with the colors of life Indeed. along with the colors Ajay, of festivity apart from everything you will have some apart from everything ajay this festival provides a platform a great holy out here where uh, different communities come together and celebrate unity in other parts of india but uh, in vrindavan uh, uh, the holy is celebrated for 40 days starting from vasant panchmi which was the 14th of february till the rang panchmi so it is a it is a it is a great journey of 40 days which includes the lathmar holy laddu mar holy and obviously rang gulal abir and uh, you know the uh, the 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 the, the colors uh, splashing colors are uh, are a very uh, are very you know a very much uh, essential part of it ajay can you can you request your camera person to pan the camera and show us how the celebrations are going on there in vrindavan yeah absolutely yeah absolutely i think i will request aniket to actually show you some of the scenes because uh, you can see that the people are actually enjoying it they are they are putting colors on each other they don't know what they, where they have come from they are just greeting each other uh, and, and and saying uh, happy holi you can see this is this is the this is the place uh, uh, in vrindavan it's called uh, prem mandir and this is the land of prem which is love and uh, this makes uh, holi very special aap kahan se aao bhaiya main mahavir ji the हाँ तो ये देखिए सभी लोग यहाँ पर आ, आप कहाँ से आते हो कोटा राजस्थान से कोटा राजस्थान सो राजस्थान से कैसे डिफरेंट है यहाँ पर होली बहुत अच्छा है होली बहुत अच्छा होली वृंदावन में होली कैसे डिफरेंट मस्त भैया मस्त ब्यूटीफुल जो मस्त ब्यूटीफुल इज द इज द वर्ल्ड दैट दे आर दे आर डिस्क्राइबिंग इट एज एंड definitely we will just that, say that, that, that the scene must have uh, uh, must be telling a lots of stories which i cannot describe indeed indeed and that's why we say that whenever there is holy in uh, vrindavan and if you are there it is special and you have, actually you have to go to vrindavan and celebrate holy there in order to feel how special holy celebrations are there uh, in uh, uh, vrindavan we leave it there and happy holy to you once again ajay and thank you so much for your analysis Well, it's not just Indians at home in festive mood. Millions of expats abroad too are celebrating Holi with great pomp. Millions are gathering in parts of the world to put on their best ethnic attire, taste some home-cooked Indian food, and of course, play with colours. A correspondent, Ishan Garg, was at a Holi event in Brussels. Take a look. Lots of colours, some thumping Bollywood music, <laughs> and food to die for. That's the chief attraction that brought hundreds to this holy event in Brussels. So, so we are kissing. We have food here every Sunday, and on Holi, we have some special delicacies. So, as you can see, please are absolutely loving all of it. The colors are also evocative of a deeper emotion: the desire to passionately hold on to one's culture in a foreign land. Festivals like Holi give people a chance to feel at home, and also meet other members of the community. That's especially true for young people who have recently moved to Belgium for studies or work. And when you tell them that this mandir is here for you, we are your family here, and you could see it's emotional when you feel that. So it is an emotional attachment with everyone. The community is at the heart of Brussels Mandir, a Hindu temple in the Belgian capital. For years, Indians in the city have pooled money to fund its operations. and on big festivals it becomes the beating heart of their culture in the city this place really feels like a microcosm of india people from different parts of the country who may not have had the opportunity to celebrate holi together have gathered here outside india in a rare melting pot of cultures it's important for the organizers here to make the event inclusive not only for expats from all walks of life but also for belgians looking to get a taste of india anyone who loves this culture who loves the people here are more than welcome we welcome them so whenever we see everyone they are very comfortable we are very comfortable because they like the culture they like like what what's happening here and it's it's very good for that and we should encourage we should encourage it with open arms expats here say events like these are a slice of home away from home and help them keep their traditions alive for the next generation ishan garg in brussels reporting for dd india a small island nation in west africa cabo verde also held a colorful celebration of holi india opened its embassy in cabo verde only 9 months back 
Locals not only got drenched in colors but also enjoyed Bollywood music. The Indian Embassy in the United Kingdom extended a warm invitation to Indian students living in the UK. They were welcomed to India House to join in this lively celebrations of Holi. There amidst a cheerful atmosphere, they immersed themselves in the joyous festivities, painting the day with vibrant colours and savouring delicious sweets. Indian Embassy in the US also celebrated Holi with great fervour, where several members of Indian diaspora participated. Celebrations of the Holi festival have begun in earnest across the world. In East Africa, the Indian community living in Uganda gathered for the festival of Kala. Deed India correspondent Leon reports from Uganda. A celebration of Kala done with glamour. The Indian community in Uganda gathered for the Holi festival a day that signifies the triumph of good over evil and arrival of spring in India. It brings quite a bit of positivity in you. You know, any negativity which is within you, you just set it off. You know that, okay, now I'm going to start a new, it's going to be a new start for me. The Holy Festival has been celebrated for thousands of years. For Hirani Rajesh, bringing his young family is an opportunity to teach them about the holy culture. Children uh, should be like, uh, uh, know the, this culture because it is our religion. A culture with everything to be happy about. The celebration is not only about color. The people have gathered to sing and dance as well. The traditional delicacies add to the camaraderie. Thank you. Alpa Savjani says she has never missed a holy festival in her adult life. It is a significant part of her life. So it is one year, two festivals which has come more important to us. One is holy, one is Diwali. Diwali has a fireworks, holy has a colors. So we are enjoying as a colorful life of the full year. That's what we pray for other people also. Different Indian communities in Uganda will hold the celebrations until the first weekend of April. The enjoyment here is already fulfilling. We are really enjoying. We are enjoying a lot. It's been really fun because we've just come, but ever since like we've started, it's really fun. The organizers plan a bonfire to light up the festival. For the celebrants, this single day truly remains a reignition of the belief of new beginnings. Leon Senyange in Kampala, Uganda, reporting for DD India. And let's take a look at other, uh, how festival, in fact, of color is being celebrated in across India. On the eve of Holi celebrations, Holika Dehen was celebrated across the nation. From Kolkata to Rajkot, people celebrated this auspicious occasion with great enthusiasm. Devotees performed puja during Holika Dehen. The vibrant festival is celebrated with enthusiasm across India. The Javans of the Border Security Force soldiers celebrated Holi with families of martyred soldiers on the India-Pakistan border. The vibrant festival of Holi has enveloped the country with distinct fervour resonating in Kulu, Himachal Pradesh. Residents embraced the festival of colours, adorning each other with a beer and gulal. They also danced to the melodious tunes of traditional music and rhythm of the drums. Famous sand artist Sudarshan Patnayak celebrates the festival of Holi by creating a masterpiece on the Puri beach in Indian state of Odisha. And still to come on DD Indian News Hour. In IPL, 
Royal challenges Bangalore to face Punjab Kings in Bengaluru. Sahara Warriors team won the Indian Open Polo Championship 2024. It's an ice cream day. Yes, you heard it right. We bring you visuals celebrating a unique day in Europe. India that invents. India that innovates. India that excites. India that invites. Land of possibility. Teeming with opportunities. Watch India Ideas each Thursday, 8 p.m. only on DD India. We just don't bring you the news as it unfolds. We get to the heart of the matter. We don't just present facts. We demystify complex social, political and economic events. We break stories that shape the world's present and future because you deserve the truth. I am Tanvi Taneja from New Delhi. I'm Oli Barrett from London. I'm Nick Harper from Washington DC. Join us on DD India Global Monday to Friday at these times. You're watching DD India News Hour. I'm Siddharth Bharadwaj. Time now for Spot and beginning with the IPL. In Indian Premier League, Royal Challengers Bangalore will lock horns against Punjab Kings in Bengaluru today. RCB played title holders Chennai Super Kings in the opening clash. But tasted defeat. And on the other hand, PBKS clashed with Delhi Capitals and recorded a close four-wicket win. RCB suffered a batting collapse and were rescued by their lower order with a pair of Anuj Rawat and Dinesh Karthik dragging them to a competitive total. RCB skipper Faf Duplessy made a rapid start before Mustafizur Rahman struck twice in an over to trigger the side. Rajat Patidar, Glenn Maxwell failed to open their accounts while Virat Kohli looked a bit rusty too. PBKS though made a better start, limiting DC to 774 for 9 before chasing it down in 19.2 hours despite a late stutter. Gujarat Titans beat Mumbai Indians by 6 runs in their opening IPL 2024 encounter in Ahmedabad on Sunday. Ardik Pandya led Mumbai Indians failed to break the unwanted streak of losing its Indian Premier League season open opener after losing to Gujarat Titans. Put to bat first, Gujarat Titans scored 168 for 6 in their 20 overs, chasing the target MI lost their way after Rohit Sharma's dismissal to end up on 162 for 9, getting shot by 6 runs. Dewal Brevis played a crucial knock, but GT Pacers managed to steal a win for the hosts. Mumbai Indians failed to chase 43 of the last 5 overs with Tilak Verma and skipper Hardik Pandya at the helm. MI thus failed to break their opening game jinx. The last, game, the last time, in fact, they've won their IPL opener was against Chennai Super Kings way back in 2012. On to polo now. The Sahara Warriors team won the Indian Open Polo Championship 2024, defeating runners-up Jindal Panthers in the final match at the Jaipur Polo Ground in New Delhi. In a nail-biting match played between two of the finest polo teams that Indian polo has, the match was complete justice in all aspects, where Sahara Warriors overcame Jindal Panthers by eight goals to five. Marking its 125th year of the Indian Open Polo Championship, this year the tournament had three spectacular teams that participated. Captain of the Jindal Panthers team, Naveen Jindal, hailed Sahara Warriors and also said that polo is India's gift to the world, which needs to be preserved. So this is the, the marquee event, this is the highest level of polo that's played in India, that is the Indian Open uh, Championship. So you can see that uh, many teams have participated and uh, there are thousands of people who are uh, came to watch this match and it was a very, a very tough match. So polo players, they give their, their heart and soul uh, while, when they are playing. It was a very good match. I think everybody enjoyed it, and that is um, that is what polo is all about. And since polo is India's gift to the world, it's our responsibility to take Indian polo to new heights. And we at Indian Polo Association, we are very serious about it, 
and we want that by 2030, we have around 100 polo players right now. So polo players and polo needs all the encouragement and we want to have at least 300 players by 2030. So a lot of youngsters we want to promote who want to take up this sport. In a unique celebration, Europe marked the Ice Cream Day on Sunday. In its 12th edition, ice cream is the only food in Europe with a dedicated day recognized by the European Parliament. People were seen indulging in delightful scoops of the frozen dessert. That's all for this edition of DD India News Hour, but let us know your thoughts on the news of the day. You can connect with us on Facebook, X formerly known as Twitter and Instagram. We'll be back with more news as it breaks here on DD India. I'm Siddharth Bharadwaj from all of us here in Delhi. Thanks for watching DD India News Hour. Once again, a very happy Holi. Enjoy the festival and play safe.